So I get my cable bill. What had been just $60 the previous month is now $140. I called and questioned the cable company as to why my rates jumped 120%. The representative told me that a piece of equipment I was leasing from them had stopped working and they had to replace it with a different piece of equipment. This the representative told me voided my contract so the company could change the pricing. A piece of their equipment I had to lease from them to use their service breaks down, they replace it, and my bill goes up 120%. I've been a customer for 10 years and this is the best they can offer me? I gave them a counter offer, cancel my service and I pay nothing. I have three weeks to set myself up with an alternative to cable. This is what I've come up with. Let's start with our option for free TV. Capturing the over-air broadcast. For that, I will need an HDTV antenna, a high-definition television antenna. But which antenna do I buy, and where do I mount it to get the best reception possible? For this, you'll need the internet. I go to an antenna signal map. Two that I really like are Antenna Direct and Antenna Web. You just put in your zip code, and it shows you all the broadcast towers in your local area, and the distance to each tower along with the compass point from your zip code. All broadcast towers in the Phoenix metropolitan area are in one location on the top of South Mountain 19 miles away from my house at a heading of 160 degrees. This is important as it tells me what size antenna to buy and how I need to position it. I purchased the Clearstream 2 Max it's an indoor-outdoor antenna with a 60-mile range. When buying an antenna, it's always a good idea to get one with a longer range than you need. Since the broadcast tower is only 19 miles from my house, this product should easily meet my requirements. I'm going to mount this antenna in the attic. I might pick up better reception if I mounted this on the roof. I'm concerned, though, with the high winds we experience in the area, the antenna might start swaying and loses its fix on the towers. Before I crawl up in the attic, I'm going to run a test on the new antenna. All I need is the antenna, a television, and some coax cable. I hook up one end of the coax to the antenna. and I hook up the other end to the television. Next, I align the antenna to the heading I retrieved from the website, 160 degrees. I don't have a compass, so I downloaded one from the App Store. There are plenty of free ones available. I turn on my television and I change the input source to antenna or in this case TV air. Then I scan for new channels this may take a while it found over 65 over-the-air channels, none of which I have to pay to watch. Everything looks good here, so let's go to the attic and install the antenna. Read the instructions for the antenna you choose before setting it up. If you choose an antenna for indoor use, you'll likely find a small stand in the box that supports the antenna. No install required. But you still need to position the antenna on the heading you retrieved from the website. I chose a location in the attic that positions the antenna on the right heading to pick up local broadcasts or over the air television. I attached a support bracket to the crossbeam. Following the product directions, I installed the antenna and then set up my television to capture the broadcasts coming out of South Mountain.
if you have multiple television sets to pick up the broadcast on all of them, all you'll need is a splitter. Now I have over 60 free channels I can get local news and sports as well as network programming, all for a one time of cost of less than $100, $75 for the antenna and $20 for the coax cable. The free stuff is a good start to replacing my cable TV. But I also want the sci-fi channel, FX, and more. My wife wants the cooking channels, and we both want the DIY networks. So I'll show you how to get the so-called cable channels at a fraction of the cost of cable. And we'll look at how to record shows so you can watch them later. To get more than their basic over-the-air broadcasts, and to be able to record for later playback, you will need an internet connection and a wireless router. You more than likely already have the internet. And if you're running more than one computer or any wireless device, you more than likely have a router. A router is just a sophisticated splitter. It sends the internet to multiple devices. If you don't have one, a wireless home routers are available commercially for about $50. Now you can use a media streamer, a device that allows you to access more free channels as well as options for paid services. There are many media streamers available, Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, and Apple TV, just to name a few. They all perform the same function, to act as a platform for streaming services such as Netflix and Amazon Prime. I use Roku. I already have one on one of our TVs and I like it, so I'm continuing to use that brand. It's inexpensive, a one-time cost of around $25, and it even comes with a remote control. I am using Roku for my streaming device. There are several models of Roku, so you need to select one of the models that's compatible with your TV. Visit Roku.com for details on finding out the right Roku for you. How to set up your Roku or other media streaming device depends on the type of streamer you buy for your particular television. The prompts may differ, for example. With the Roku, I plug the device into the USB port and turn on the TV. I follow the prompts to connect the Roku to my home network. Make sure you have your password handy. You may have to go into the product website to complete the setup. The device then takes over and loads channels onto your TV. Let's see what we got with Roku. We got several DIY channels, cooking channels, ooh, ESPN, TNT, Fox Sports, TBS, FX, uh, CW, MTV, the History Channel, Sci-Fi. Prime Video, that's Amazon Prime. I have an account for my business, I just enter my password, and I get Prime TV for free. You should be aware though, that the programming access fees via streaming devices, such as Sci-Fi, is not the brand new episodes. Rather you find past seasons of shows already aired on cable TV and network television. If you want to watch live television, that is, watch new stuff when it first airs, you will need a subscription to a streaming service like Feel. A subscription service like Feel will cost about $20 a month. It's an additional cost, but it's considerably less than the $140 a month my cable company wanted to charge me. With this service, I get most of my favorite channels. We got A and E, uh, American History Channel, Animal Planet, Access, BBC America, news shows, comedy, uh, CMT, uh, more comedy, more cooking shows, Discovery Channel, uh, Life. There's a whole list of them. With the antenna, the Roku and a $20 a month subscription to Philo, I replace 98% of the television I watch. Now I need a way to record the programs I want to watch later, as well as to be able to watch across multiple devices. For this, I will need a tuner.
The signal starts at the broadcast tower and is picked up by the antenna. The antenna sends a signal to the tuner and from there it either goes to the NAS, the network access server for storage and recording, or to the router. The router distributes the signal to your home network. The signal is picked up by the media streamer and is seen through the television set. You can get a single tuner, a dual tuner, or a quad tuner. With a quad tuner, you can watch or record four different channels at the same time. I selected the Tableau Quad Tuner. I have three television sets in the house, but I rarely use them all at the same time. And I don't need to record more than four television shows at the same time. So a quad tuner should meet my needs. This tuner has a built-in NAS, Network Access Server. This allows for storage. I use the built-in software and I just add an external drive and I have a Network Access Server. Now I can record my shows. Plug the coax cable running from your antenna into the tuner. Run Cat5 cable from the tuner to your router. Turn on the power. Go to the software page on the internet connected device and follow the prompts. Test the connection on your television and other devices. When the cable company started charging me $140 a month, I canceled my service. I replaced that service with an antenna that captures over the air programming, a media streaming device, and streaming services. I also added a tuner for distribution and for storage. So what's my final cost? The cost of the antenna and coax gets me local programming with no monthly cost. Add the Roku streaming device, I pay $25. You may pay a little bit higher. This brings me to $125. With two additional Rokus, my cost is $175. Add the one-time cost of $80 for the tuner and my initial investment is $255. We already had Prime Video at no additional cost and we added two more streaming services, Philo and Netflix. Philo streaming services cost me $20 a month and Netflix cost me $15. My monthly cost now comes to $35. That's a difference of $105 from the cable company. I replaced 98% of my cable TV with an antenna, a streaming device, and a couple of streaming services. I hope my plan has inspired you. Your setup may cost a little more or a little less. This depends on your personal television viewing needs. There are several options available and you should choose the ones that are right for you. Thanks for watching.